Hi, my name's David, and in the last video you saw how to sign up to Descara, create users, assign roles, and set up two-factor authentication. In this video, I'll be showing you how to create a company in Descara Books, and how to set up Descara Books settings. So let's get started. First, we're going to click on Books. Inside here, it says choose how you want to start your journey. Explore with a demo company or set up your company. We're going to click Set Up Your Company. Inside here, you can update the company name. You can choose which country you're from. And please make sure you select the right country because your tax compliance will change based upon it. So if I select Singapore, the tax compliance will be based on Singapore. If I choose United States, it will be based upon United States tax compliance. So please make sure you choose the correct one. We can also select which currency you wish to use. We can also choose the financial year start date. And we can also choose the book beginning date. For example, August 1st. So what is book beginning date? Book beginning date means from this date going forward, all transactions will be created in the system. Everything before that will be considered openings. So for example, you would input all your opening transactions, your opening invoice, your opening bills, all your opening chart of accounts, your opening inventory and its value, and any other opening information that is required. Please take note, you cannot change which country you're from, which currency do you use, financial year start date and book beginning date after the company is created. If you wish to change this information, you'll have to go to your all-in-one business solution or go.discare.com, go to settings and click reset company. Please take note, resetting company will remove all data from your books, CRM and people. So please make sure this is correct and then click next. So inside here it asks, what does your business deal with? Does it deal with services? If so, click the checkbox. Digital products, click the checkbox. Inventory, click the checkbox. And then you can select under inventory, do you want to activate pick, pack, ship, multiple warehouse, and price list. So select which ones that apply to you. And then if everything looks good, you can click all set. Hold on tight, we're setting up your first organization. Inside here it says, let's get started. You can create your first invoice, create your first expense, import your data and connect to a bank. But first, what we're going to do is we're going to click on settings and we're going to click on organization profile and we're going to click on the pencil icon. Inside here, I can add an image. I'm able to change the date format. I can see the name and the tax registry here as well. Next, let's go to finance. Inside here, I can see the financial start date, the book beginning date, and the reporting currency. I also have the ability to enable multi-currency. Inside here, I can select which currency I want and click Save. I can also change the number of decimal places. So I can increase the number of decimal places to 3 and 4. Please take note, if you increase the number of decimal places, you will not be able to decrease it later. You can also change the number format. Under compliance, you'll see your different compliance information. For example, since I selected Singapore, I see UEN, GST, and opt-in for e-invoicing. If I select a different country, different fields will show here. Next, let's go to address. Inside here, I'm able to enter the address, for example. And you can see the postal code and city and country populated. If I want to add another address, I can click add other address. And I can type it in here as well. And I continue to add other addresses just by clicking add other address. Then I can set it as my current billing address or my current shipping address. Once everything looks good, I can click update. And now I can see that my organization information has been updated. Next, let's click on settings and let's click on currency. Inside here, you can see the currency, code, simple exchange rate, exchange rate date, and the visibility. You also have the ability for auto update FX rates. So I can activate or deactivate this based upon my requirements. I can select daily, weekly, or monthly. If I wish to activate another currency, I can search for it here and I can click the eye icon. If I want to activate multiple currencies, 
I can select it over here and click activate. Now if I want to deactivate a currency, I again can click on the eye icon. Or if I want to deactivate multiple, I can select them and click deactivate. Now if I want to update the exchange rate, I can click on change rate. I can go here and type in the new rate and click save. If I want to view the rate of deactivated currencies, I can click view rate and I can see the exchange rate, effective date, and the timestamp. Next let's go to settings and let's click on taxes. Inside here you'll see your different taxes. This all changes based upon which country you selected. Based upon your different tax compliance, different information will show up here. For example, if you selected the United States, you will not see any taxes here. It will be based upon your address and your contacts address, and then it will be automatically calculated. In Singapore, it's based upon GST, so you can see all the GST amounts here. The key thing I want to show you is here, where you can click Add Tax. This is where you can add a new tax by putting in the name, percentage, description, the tax code, and is it based upon purchase, sales, or both? And this is where you can add the tax account. You can also add tax groups. So inside here I can input the group name, description, I can create a tax code, and select. Is it for sales, purchases, or both? Then I can add in the components. And I can determine, is it based upon pre-tax amount or after-tax amount? And after that, I can save it. And the group has been created. Next, let's go to Settings, and let's click on Payment Terms. Inside here, I can see the name, term days, and quick action. If it's our default payment terms, if you click the three dots, you can set as default. You can always add a payment term by clicking Add Payment Term. Inside here, I can put in the name example net 60 put in the term days and I can save it if the term is something that I created I can click the three dots and edit delete or set it as default next let's go to settings and let's go to unit of measurement inside here I can see all the default unit of measurement I can see the name description I can see the pencil icon but please take note you cannot edit system default UOM and you can see the trash can icon but also please take note, you cannot delete system default UOM. And you can add UOM by clicking Add UOM. Inside here I can add the UOM name. And I can also input the description. And then I can save it. After that I can click the Edit button. And I can edit it. And I also can click the Delete button. And I can delete it. Next, let's go to Settings, and let's go to Unit of Measurement Schema. Inside here, I can see the schema name, default UM, and action. But currently, we don't have any UM schema, so let's create one. Let's add UOM. Inside here, we can add a name. For example, for box. I can select the default UM, for example, pieces. And then I can select the alternate UM, for example, box. I can say here, for example, there's tw 25 pieces per box. And I can add multiple conversions here. So pieces per kg. So maybe I want to say 5 pieces per kg. Just to give you an example. And then I can just save it. And you can see my UM schema has been created. So what is a unit measurement schema? A unit measurement schema tells you how different units of measurements relate to each other. For example, how many pieces is equal to a box, or how many pieces are equal to a kg? Well, for example, kgs and grams, or metric tons and kgs, it's all fairly obvious, but when you have pieces and boxes and cartons and packs, they all may apply with different types of quantity per each, based upon a specific type of product. So this is where you can define a unit of measurement for each one and how they relate to each other. Next, let's click on Settings. And let's click on Custom Fields. 
Inside here, I can see the field name, field type, max length, sequence number, availability, and visibility of my custom fields. If I want to create a custom field, I can click Create. Inside here, you can put in the name, set as mandatory, determine is it a text box, a multi-select dropdown, or a numbers field. Let's first create a text box custom field, and let's call it Contact Person. Let's put in the max length, and we can put in default value if required. Next, let's go to Availability. Inside here, you can select, does this show in contact, product, account, journal entry, expenses, deposits, debit note, credit note, invoice, quotation, purchase order, or bills. So for this custom field, I just want to show in contact. So I'm selecting that and clicking create. Now inside here, I can see my custom field. Next, let's create another one, but this time as a number. Now inside here, I'm going to put in the field name. For example, size of company, I'm going to select the field type, this time number. And now I can choose the decimal precision. So in this case, it's going to be zero. And I can also set any default value. I can click availability. And I'm going to again put this under my contacts. And I'm going to create. All right. So we're going to create one more custom field. And we're going to select multi selection drop down menu. And this time, we're going to call this field outlets. For example, maybe orchard. Changi, Jurong. You can create multiple dropdowns, and of course, it doesn't need to be outlets. It could be any type of multi-selection dropdown menu you'd like. It could be even projects. And the great thing about this is for custom fields, you can use it to filter out your reports. So for example, my PNL, I want to see based on specific outlet. I'm able to see it through there. Or for example, a project. Next, let's click under Availability, and this time I want to put this under Invoices, Quotations, Purchase Orders, my debit note, credit note. I want this in my deposits, expenses, and any journal entries I create. And I'm going to click Create. And now you can see I've created three different types of custom fields. Next, let's go to Settings. And inside here, you can see the audit log. We will cover this after we start creating some transactions in the system and also after we create our products, our contacts, and our chart of accounts. Import log. We will also go and check this out after we start importing our products, contacts, and our chart of accounts. Email. So this is where you can set up your email. For example, if you don't want to send your email using Descara's default email, you can use this to send out your own. So let me show you how to do it. Inside here, we can enter the sender name, sender email address, username, password, and under SMTP server info, we can input the server host name, and the port number. After that, we can scroll down and click Test Connection and Send. Test email has been sent successfully. Please check your inbox and save these settings. So we can actually go to our inbox and we can see Test Email from Descara, Test Email from Descara. So I received it. Then we can click Save. So Email Settings Saved Successfully. Now if I go back to click Email, for whatever reason, I can click here to delete these settings. Next, we're going to click on Settings, and we're going to go to Sequence Number Settings. Inside here, I can see my quote, invoice, order, and bill, and I can see my default sequence numbers. If I click on it, I can click Add New. So if I want to add a new custom document number format, I can add it here. For example, maybe I want Q. And instead, I want a slash, display digits. Maybe I want six, separator, and maybe I want a suffix, for example, and I can save it. And I can select and select that as my default. And I can do this for all of them. So for example, if I want to do that for invoice, and I've just added that, I can do that for order.
set as default. That way I don't have to change it every time. Actually, maybe I want B. And save it. And you can see now I've updated my running numbers for my transactions. Then I can click confirm. All right, you've learned how to create your Descara Books company, set up your organization profile, manage your currencies, your taxes, create your payment terms, your unit of measurement and your unit of measurement schema, create your custom fields, set up your email and set up your sequence number. In the next video, we're going to be covering how to import your products your contacts, and your chart of accounts.